now with petrol prices being the way they are, which is sky high literally, it makes absolute sense why some manufacturers like Volkswagen have focused on diesel for their Jetta executive sedan, for instance. But even in this day and age, where you feel like robbing a bank every time you need to fill up your car with a tank full of unleaded, for some people it does make sense to buy a petrol car. Firstly, if you drive very little, then the lower purchase cost of a petrol makes up for the higher running costs. And secondly, and more importantly for us today, if you're a driving enthusiast, petrol, Yes, please. Volkswagen's new turbocharged petrol engines are badged as TSI. Now, while everyone else on the market is offering 1.8 liter engines, the Jetta TSI comes with a 1.4 liter motor. The 1390cc four cylinder engine is a high tech piece of kit. It uses direct injection and turbocharging. In terms of power, it develops 120 bhp, which, to be honest, isn't all that exciting. But it develops 20.4 kilograms of torque as well. Like all TSI motors, this 1.4 is also very refined and well performance, not bad. Accelerate in a straight line from standstill, and the 100 km hour mark will come up in 10 and a half seconds. That isn't slow. And around corners, it's no slouch either. The Jetta features an electronic differential lock which delivers killer grip. It'll just pick a line around a corner and charge through it. And since this petrol Jetta is 42 kilos lighter than the diesel version, it also feels more responsive to steer. The question isn't how the Jetta TSI compares with its diesel sibling. What matters is how it compares with that. Ah, there's nothing like sibling rivalry. Skoda's Laura, in fact, was the first one to bring the brilliance of TSI to India. And it also packs a bigger motor. Yep, the Skoda has a 1.8-litre four-cylinder motor that also features direct injection and turbocharging. So obviously, it also has more power, 40 bhp to be exact. And it has 25.5 kilograms of torque. Now let's put these two head to head. In a drag race, despite its tendency to wheel spin, the Laura will leave the Jetta trailing by over 2 seconds, and that's to 100 km an hour. With the Jetta demolished, I eagerly hopped into the Laura for a first hand experience of its performance. It certainly is very talented. It's not just the outright performance, it's just got so much punch on tap. Mid range is nice, bottom end is nice, and it likes being revved up as well. The Jetta, in comparison, doesn't like being revved up as much. But on the drivability front, it is nice. But its smaller motor can't match the urgency that the Skoda delivers. In the run from 20 to 18 third gear, the Skoda is 2.5 seconds quicker than the VW. And in the run from 40 to 100 in fourth, the Jetta lags by 9 seconds. So the Skoda is way more drivable and the immediacy of its power delivery just makes it so enthusiastic to drive. Both cars use six-speed manual gearboxes, which have nice quick shifts. So they are on par on that front. There is some difference in terms of refinement between the two cars. And you can feel it in the Jetta when you cross the 4000 RPM mark. That's where it starts losing some of its smoothness. When you start focusing on dynamics, you'll see that on paper, these two cars are very similar. Both cars use McPherson struts at the front and multi-link setups at the rear. But do they handle the same? They don't handle the same. The Laura doesn't have that same kind of composure as the Jetta around corners. Despite that, it's a close call.
One of the reasons for that is the tyres. The Jetta sports 205 by 55 rubber that's wrapped around 16 inch rims. Its suspension setup is on the softer side. And as a result, it doesn't feel very pointy. But when you chuck it into a corner, it is absolutely planted. It picks a line and just holds on to it for all it's worth. In comparison, the Laura has narrower 195 by 65 tyres which are wrapped around 15 inch rims. And its rear suspension setup is a bit soft. So let's say going around a corner you want to change a line, well, the Laura will get a bit flustered. But then it makes up for it in many ways. The Laura steering feels really nice, it's got this great directness about it, it's got good weight, the feedback is really nice too. The electric steering is so feisty, it doesn't ever let you know that it's not a good old hydraulic unit. The front suspension of the Laura is a bit stiff, so when you turn it into a corner, it just tucks in, it feels very nice and pointy and immediate, which makes it very, very fun. And when you combine that with the bomb of a petrol motor, the Laura is incredible fun. But let's not get carried away. Not all of you out there want to drive hard and fast. Some people might actually want something more sedate, in which case the Jetta TSI's refined motor would do just fine. It actually coaxes you to drive in a relaxed manner. Its smaller motor manages to deliver slightly better fuel efficiency than the Laura. And if you plan to be chauffeur driven, then the Jetta has another thing going for it. As it turns out, the Jetta's plush suspension and better backseat make it a great pick. But if we are talking about the back seat and comfort and practicality, then we have to talk about that car, don't we? There's no doubt about it. The back seat of the Toyota Corolla is the most comfortable one in the class. And even though its ride may not be the best, it is pretty good. Sure, its build quality won't worry either of the Europeans here, but its equipment list is much better. The Toyota offers touchscreen controls, Bluetooth connectivity, fully powered driver's seats, and you could have it with an automatic transmission as well. Hyundai's new Elantra is also trying to challenge the Corolla. Like all Hyundais, the Elantra comes superbly equipped and it's clearly the best built Hyundai till date. Its backseat though doesn't have the under thigh support, the backrest angle is too reclined and the swooping roofline takes away from the sense of space. But when it comes to looks, the Elantra is very attractive. It looks much more stylish than the understated Jetta which ends up looking like a Vento. And that might be a bit of a turn-off for some. The Corolla looks more striking. Its squinting eyes give it a youthful character. And when you compare the prices, the Elantra is very attractively priced, while the Corolla is priced on par with the Jetta. But if you don't want to be in the front seat, then the pick is quite simple. Now between these two, the Corolla has the better back seat, it has the better levels of equipment, it just feels like better value. The Jetta in comparison feels better built, has great ride quality, but ends up feeling a bit pricey. But if you look at things very, very coldly and you're only going to be in the back seat, then the Corolla definitely seems like great value. If you look forward to getting into the driver's seat, then it's kind of hard to ignore the Laura. It's got the most stylish looks, it's got a crackling petrol motor and it has the lighter price tag. But it's the Laura's package that ends up feeling, well, just more appealing. 
Its petrol motor, turbocharged engine just feels like a bomb. It's got so much punch and drivability on tap while offering you marginally lesser fuel efficiency. Its ride quality, for the most part, is really quite nice. Back seat is decent, but the more important thing is you're going to be spending most of your time at the front in the driver's seat. You're going to love it. It just feels very involving, very exciting. On top of that, it looks nice and, well, it's priced well too. So between these three, if you're more focused on the front seat, then well, the Laura Petrol is the one to go for.